Hello and welcome to yet another YouTube video here on this channel. We are back at the time of year where we have like end of year videos, rankings, things like that. And this year I am starting a little earlier than I did last year because last year I wasn't able to finish all of the stuff I wanted to uh, finish because these applications, they have a lot of like new uh features and new updates coming towards the end of the year, which I also have to cover. That's why I am starting earlier this year. It might be a little too early because we're still in November when this uh, video is out. But uh, in order to finish all of the videos I want to make, I have to start early. And in today's uh, video, we are ranking object-based note-taking apps. And, and there are three object-based note-taking apps and I won't go too deep into each one of them but I will rank them and I will try to give you my thoughts on them and where they are headed. So object-based note-taking is basically that everything inside of your note-taking app is an object. So this is an object for example um, and uh, like uh, this is a uh, a query based on the object type script and talks. So uh, basically, um, these are all objects and they have different object types. And this goes for all of the different like object-based uh, note-taking apps. They work uh, similarly, even though they are a little uh, different. Uh, all three of them actually work similarly. Um, but of course they are different as well as we will figure out throughout this video. So in third place, I actually have any type, uh, which is the one I'm on uh, right now. This is a more privacy focused uh, one with end-to-end -end encryption. And they are trying to do a lot more uh, with things like shared spaces uh, and also chat features, which they've added. Um, so you can see the chat right here, you have a bunch of different spaces here, which I have, uh, and I have my own personal space theme. Totally reworked the sidebar. Um, and they've also changed a lot of their uh, terminology. Like last year, this uh, used to be, uh, this used to be a, called a set. Now it is called a curie. And I think a lot of the stuff they have done uh, has been like the right things to do where I, still uh like think that um any type lags behind which makes sense because um it uh, is um like the two other applications are further along in their development uh but where i feel like this lacks a little is like just general like quality of life stuff uh and also i feel like um out of the three applications, any type seems to be the least approachable. With that being said, I think that they have the best uh, mobile experience, but um, it just seems, especially on uh, the desktop version, to be uh, less approachable compared to the two other ones. Uh, and the big offering here is like privacy and end-to-end -end encryption and peer-to-peer uh, -peer syncing and things like that, which aren't things like I can easily explain to uh, my friends and family members. So uh, they are still like an application for niche users. I think they've added a bunch of like cool uh, stuff here um, this year. Uh, especially in order to make it a lot more approachable and a lot easier to use. Like, it feels like it is much easier to use the application now than it was last year. So I think AnyType has gotten a lot closer to its two object-based competitors. Um, but I still think that it lags a little bit behind. But um, I am a big believer of uh, any type. Any type is actually also my favorite out of the different ones on this list. So I prefer any type, uh, but generally I would say that it still lags a little bit behind, but I am really excited to see where it goes next uh, year. They've released their pricing plan now. They've made a lot of important changes with the sidebar here also. Uh, a lot of stuff here uh, as well with the properties panel which used to be called relations just like the set query uh, stuff um, they've changed that as well so 
it is definitely going in the right direction and I'm really excited to see where uh, this will end up uh, next year. I think it can like overtake both Tana and Capacities next uh, year, but currently it is number three. Um, let's open up uh, Tana right here. thing I really like about any type is that it is uh, local first um, and, or offline first. But uh, Tana has also uh, added a bunch of stuff. So this is the AI application out of um, out of uh, the three. Like this focuses heavily on AI. If I open up my uh, social media ideas here, because here I can show everything, you can see uh, how uh, this works. This is also an outliner application. Uh, and just like uh, any type, you can create databases uh, based on like uh, just based on your different object types. So here uh, you have all of my different ideas and you can see that I have a bunch of different ideas. I can also go through here, which I've like created for myself with related notes and um, these, uh, these like views, different views of different like social medias. So I can go around uh, this. Uh, what I really like about um, uh, Tana is how heavily AI is in the application. Um, and also, uh, apart from the AI, I'm currently on the free plan. Apart from the AI, I really like this uh, right uh, sidebar stuff where I can add like related notes. This is actually a search query as well. Um, so you can see the search uh, right here. I can actually create search queries um, and have them live within another object. And I know that all of this sounds uh, really uh, technical because it it is, it probably is. Uh, and that is the whole problem with object-based note-taking, which I will come to towards the end of uh, this uh, video. But um, the AI stuff is great. The only huge problem with the AI stuff and Tana and everything you have to add inside of Tana, like these related notes with the search query, I had to watch two YouTube videos to make this happen. And this doesn't even in, uh, involve like custom prompting and AI and things like that. Uh, I have one thing uh, where I can like write a task. So if I write a to do uh, and I do like task and I press enter, it auto fills the properties for my tasks. I have that for my social media management as well. So um, if I just open this up, uh, it auto fills all of these based on how I initially like write um, the social media idea. So what I would do here is like how to pick the right object based note taking up for you. And I would do uh, write YouTube and to do and it would auto fill those for me. That took me um, like half an hour, 40 minutes to uh, get right. Um, and uh, it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you have to do that for all of your different object, uh, objects and you have to do that for all of the stuff you are like working on and building inside of Tana, that starts to take a lot of time. But uh, the AI stuff in here is like really, really good. I haven't found an application that is as good with AI. They are adding offline. I'm not sure if it is out yet by the time I am filming, uh, publishing this video, but uh, it won't be uh, offline first, but it will be offline within the application. So you can use it offline uh, because you saw what happened when I turned off my internet. Uh, um, earlier in the video. So that is something they are trying to fix. They've also added like a backslash functionality to make things a lot easier. And um, they as just like uh, any type has added a bunch of stuff to like make the experience easier. But I still think that there is a few steps to take. So I am placing this as a second because I think it is a little um a little better than any type it is really hard to compare because they do different things but i would say that it is probably a little better than any type uh but it still has some ways to go before it is at the same level as something like um 
Capacities. I think Capacities is far ahead of the others. They've also just uh, did um, their Readwise integration. So this is their Readwise integration, which I think was really, really interesting. A really interesting way of doing a Readwise integration. Tana also has a Readwise integration. So just keep that in mind. I have a Readwise integration right here. Uh, so there is a Readwise integration there as well. Uh, but it works like similarly to the two other applications. I have like, let's open up my movies. So this is basically a database of movies, which I can turn into something else. Uh, I have the social media stuff here. This is also a search search query, which you can do both in Tana and in uh, any type as well. Out of all of these three, this one was the easiest one to learn. And I've heard that from others as well. I first thought that it was just me, but a lot of uh, people feel exactly the same way. This was a lot easier to uh, learn. It is much easier to set up a query here. Uh, the backslash functionality is really good. I really like that. Um, it feels much more approachable. I don't know if it is. Like uh, you can see here, I can do backslash and I can actually create my different objects. Um, I don't know if it really is more approachable, but it feels more uh, approachable. Uh, the AI stuff isn't as good as in something like Talma, but um, you can see uh, you can see like how much easier this is. Like I can start curing just by. Uh, using the backslash functionality. So let's try this just to show you. So let's query web links uh, and it opens it up and I can like edit it. And especially if you're coming from Notion, which a lot of people are when they are starting to use these object-based applications, this uh, feels much easier to get into. So I can filter it by tags, for example, um, or actually uh, filter by other properties. So you have different properties here um, that you can filter by. So I could filter by like tags, backlinked object counts. Like this makes uh, sense. Uh, it starts to get a little tricky with the variables and things like that. Uh, but the idea is much simpler than in the other applications or at least the editors feels a, a little simpler than in uh, the two other applications. Um, so I think that is what makes it uh, or what makes me like this a lot better. It also works without an internet connection. So right now uh, this isn't syncing because my internet is terrible and it keeps falling apart. Uh, but that is also something I really do like about this uh, is the fact that it has offline, uh, but so does any type. I think what makes me believe that this is currently the best application is that it feels and it has always felt much more approachable and uh, the UI UX of this feels better. And I've always thought that it was just me that thought that this just looked better, but uh, a lot of people have said the same thing. So I think that covers up my ranking. I would say that any type has improved uh, the most. Capacities, uh, I would say, has uh, improved second most. Uh, and Tana, depending on the offline stuff, but offline is really hard to do. So I get that it has taken time, but I would put uh, Tana in a three when it comes to improvements. But the ranking is still the same as it was last year. So Capacities, Tana, and uh, the last one is any type. I think that covers it for today's video. Any questions, leave them down below. If you want to see me ranking all of the other stuff uh, and doing all of the other end of year reviews, uh, please do subscribe. And as usual, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you again quite soon.